During the first half of the 4th century BC, the Romans faced a period of extreme difficulty. Starting with the sack of Rome of 387 BC at the hands of the Senones, a migrating Gallic tribe. This event triggered many wars with its neighbors who now tried to take advantage of the weakened Roman states. But to meet this new challenge, Marcus Furius Camillus, a Roman statesman, general and soldier stepped up. After chasing away the marauding Senones and convincing the Romans to rebuild their city, Camillus became known by many as the second founder of Rome. To face the new challenges of the 4th century BC, he triggered a series of reforms to the Roman war machine that would later that century turn it into something much more akin to what we usually associate to Rome, the legionary and the manipular system. During the 8th to 6th centuries BC, the Etruscan kings of Rome introduced hoplite warfare to the Romans. Later, during the 6th century BC, Servius Tullius reformed the army. Servius created the census and graded the citizens of Rome into six categories. Each category was defined by the equipment the men could afford. The first three classes were the heavy infantry, the Hestati, Princepes and Triarii. While the names might be familiar to you, these men were equipped akin to hoplites, wielding a hoplon and the spear, or hasta as the Romans called it. The Hastati were the younger, less experienced men. They fought in the front rows to prove their worth and move through the Roman societal and military ranks. If the battle went south, the next group in line to fight were the Prenquipes. They had seen action and had proven themselves in combat. They were usually older, more experienced and better equipped than the Hastati. If even then the Prenquipes were routed, the battle would come to the Triarii. The absolute best of the best, the cream of the crop, they were exceptionally armed, older and experienced soldiers, the last line of defense. The remaining classes were the Rorari, lightly armored and usually carrying javelins to harass the enemy before the main engagement. The upper classes would often fight on horseback, but these were outside the scope of these classes. During the 4th century, this system was proving to be quite ineffective against the challenges of the age. After all, the Italic Peninsula was very different from Greece and the hoplite phalanx had its faults. While the Greeks were divided into city-states, wars were determined by arranged battles on large plains where the phalanx could move unimpeded. Adding to this, the similar culture of the belligerent states enforced the use of the hoplite by simple lack of diverging military doctrine and similar traditions. Italy, on the other hand, was culturally more diverse. Different tribes, cities and states waged war focusing on different aspects of warfare. The Gauls to the north relied on their longswords and rapid heavy charges. The Etruscans followed the Greek traditions of the hoplites. In central Italy, the cities in the mountainous regions of Samnium made use of more flexible formations to move quickly and fight effectively in wooded and mountainous terrain. The hoplite phalanx had two severe limitations, maneuverability and continuity on harsh terrain. And both these aspects were key if Rome was to defeat their nimbler foes. Thus enters Marcus Furius Camillus, Roman dictator six times and victor of several military campaigns. His first reform was after the siege of Vey of 396 BC, where he introduced the salary. The salary allowed the soldiers themselves to acquire new equipment and there was a gradual shift from the round hoplon shield to the oblong scutum. After meeting the Gauls in combat, Camillus mandated that soldiers would now require to use round iron helmets with smooth surfaces. These would protect the men from the Gallic longswords, increasing the chance the attacks would glance off or even break the swords. Though, honestly, I personally find the latter quite unlikely. The rim of the shields was now required to be plated with copper to protect the wood beneath and the soldiers were taught to use javelins that would stick to the enemy shields and thus render them useless. These innovations proved effective at the Battle of Alba of 367 BC, where Camillus defeated a marauding army of Gauls. During the second half of the 4th century BC, Rome faced a new challenge. They were the Samnite Wars. There were three wars in total that lasted until the beginning of the 3rd century. But it is at the end of the Second Samnite War in 314 BC that the manipular system is believed to have emerged. 
the more flexible Samnite forces already used the variation of a manipular system. This system made their army quicker on their feet, and they were more organized when fighting in rough terrain. After a series of setbacks against the Samnites, the manipular legion was born. It isn't associated to anybody in particular, and is likely the result of a series of reforms made over a period of a few years. But what is the Manipular Legion, after all? The Manipole was a unit of 120 men, each drawn from a single infantry class. Like Servius reforms, the Estati, Principes and Triari still existed. However, they were now divided into Manip. At this time, the Romans were mostly using the Scutum, a rectangular, slightly rounded shield that would offer great protection. The Hastati and Prinquipes carried two javelins with them, the famous Pilla and the Gladius. However, the Gladius may have not been the weapon of choice at this point, as historians are not certain of when this new weapon was introduced. So it is possible that the Hasta was still the weapon of choice by 300 BC. And even though the Prinquipes and Hastati would eventually drop the spear in favor of the Gladius, the Triari would still go on fighting with the traditional spear. The Manipular Legion was made up of 10 maniples of Hastati, 10 maniples of Prinquipes, and 10 half strength maniples of Triari. It was supported by around 1200 velites, light skirmishers levied from the lower classes of Roman citizenry, and 300 equites, horsemen drawn from the Roman aristocracy. As a whole, generally speaking, the Manipular Legion would have around 4,500 men, though this could vary depending on the situation. The Manipular Legion made use of the famous Triplex Axis formation, often referred to as the Checkerboards formation. The Triplex Axis would be formed as the Legion approached the enemy formation. The Velites would skirmish with the enemy as the Romans formed up and position. The Velites would then retreat through the gaps in the axes and the first line would close up and lock shields. There is still debate though on whether the Romans fought in triplex axes or not. Personally, I really do believe not, because if they did, both Hastati and Prinquipes would be engaged at the same time, and this was not supposed to happen. The Hastati fought first. It could also open gaps on the Roman lines, which would not be ideal. By the time of the Punic Wars, from 264 BC forward, the Manipular Legion was a staple of the Roman military, and it saw action until 107 BC when Gaius Marius abolished the Manipular system in favor of a cohort system. But that will be history for another time. I really appreciate all the support you guys give me, so if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. And if you did like this one, here's some other topics on screen that I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy. Stay wonderful, I have been Wolf, and I'll see you all on the next time.